We've seen with alkene chemistry, if you add a halogen across a double bond, you get the dihalide. So we're hoping to see a similar thing with alkynes because, you know, one pi bond, one mole of halogen, we should get the dihalide, right? In fact, you do, but you get a mixture of products. X2 is just any halide, uh, chlorine or bromine, for example. Plus the cis product. You don't just get the trans product, you get the cis product. And there you go. So that is the product of this reaction. And also, these give you a mixture of cis and trans, but they also are very difficult to stop. Um, so you'll actually get a mixture of not only the dihalides, but the tetrahalides, where they add another mole across the, the triple double bond. So therefore, this reaction is very difficult to control to get it to stop here. You'll actually just, one of, as you're reacting through here, the alkenes now will start picking up molecules of the halide uh, to give you the tetrahalide, which is not what you want. So let's take a look at how, what if we just add two moles right away. What if we just take our alkene, or alkyne, pardon me, and add two moles right away. Well, if you do that, you'll get the tetrahalide and very good yields, actually. Two moles now of X to the two, where it's chlorine or bromine. And now you will get, oops. And the mechanism of this reaction is extremely it's basically the same as adding across a double bond. Oops, not chlorine. No, hydro no, sorry, not hydrogen. It's X, chlorine, or bromine. Okay? And you get about 100% yield of this. This is a very good reaction. So uh, going all the way to the tetra -al uh, halide is a very easy reaction, very good reaction. Trying to get the dihalide is very difficult. So now if you want to add... HX, so hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, you'll get X being added to the triple bond in a Markovnikov fashion, so it'll give the most uh, stable cation. And if you add two moles of acid, you'll get the dihalide the geminal dihalide. Like so. Now, what's the mechanism of this reaction? What happens here the pi bond will now attack there just like an alkene would. Nothing new here, really. Giving you the Markovnikov cation, which then will be attacked by X minus. Remember, X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to add another equivalent of acid. So two moles. And the pi bond will attack, just like before. So this mechanism here and this one here, exactly the same. Pi bond's attacking. No big deal. You guys are used to this.
and that will form the R group here and the X here, the original X. And now X. Oh, sorry, put the cation in. So it's a cation. Cation here. And now attack from the halogen. We'll go there. And then that will generate your product, which is right here. So that's the mechanism of the reaction. Let's walk through it real quick. Pi bond from the alkyne attacks the hydrogen of HX, hydro, uh, HCl, HBr, HI, forming the cation in the Markovnikov way, which puts the cation on the more stable, on the more substituted carbon. X minus chloride, bromide, iodide attacks the carbocation to form the um, alkene, if you would, the hal the uh, the uh, alkene with a halogen stuck on it. The pi bond here attacks the hydrogen of HX. Lone pairs go to the X, forming X minus chloride, bromide, iodide. The, the Markovnikov cation forms. Then the X minus chloride, bromide, iodide attacks the carbocation to give you what's known as the geminal dihalide. That's how this mechanism works. Okay, So it's very, very similar to alkene but only just slightly different, has another step. But the step is exactly the same as the first one. So both steps are the same. You're just doing the same reaction twice, or the same mechanism, pardon me, twice. All right, let's take a look at anti-Markovnikov addition of the hydrogen bromide. All right, so let's take a look at the anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr to a triple bond or to an alkene, alkyne, pardon me. I say that a lot, alkene, alkyne are challenging to get distinguish sometimes. Alkynes have triple bonds. So we're working with alkynes in this chapter or this unit. All right, so if you add HBr to an alkyne, in an anti-Markovnikov fashion, you will indeed get the anti-Markovnikov product, but you will get a mixture of cis and trans. So you won't get exclusively one or the other. So let's take a quick look at this mechanism. So the R groups, or pardon me, the peroxide, will do a homolytic cleavage, nothing new here, to form the, uh, the free radical. HBr will then react with the oxygen free radical using fish hook arrows because it's one electron movement at a time. Oh, I'm sorry. Pardon me. There, we'll start here. Sorry, it gives you the bromine radical, not the anion. There we go. Plus the alcohol. So you form an alcohol in this reaction. The, al the alcohol is more of a spectator. It doesn't really do anything. Next step, the radical, bromine radical, will attack our alkyne. There you go, and hydrogen on here. And now, of course, it's, gonna, it's a chain reaction, right? So it has to keep going. So I'm going to draw it down here to give, give the drawing a little more room. There we go. And now this radical will attack that, pro, that hydrogen to give you the bromine radical back.
and put the hydrogen on the carbon. And plus B R radical. So this chain reaction, of course, so this goes back up to here, does the whole process again. And you form your alkene, your halogenated alkene. Now remember, this is going to give you a mixture of cis and trans isomers.